Also, uh, advance notice next week, our speaker is asked to delay her presentation. So if anybody's got any ideas for a speaker next week, please let me know as soon as possible because we've got a gap next week. But today we know. Today we've got Kia Lisak. She's the executive director of the Sioux Arts Community Center. She, uh, she's got a resume that is really impressive. Uh, she spearheaded and led the successful and visionary process and a multi-million dollar campaign to bring the ZAC downtown, triple its size and its ability to build community through accessible art experience for all. She was recognized by the Missoulian in 2013 as one of Western Montana's top 20 business leaders under 40, 40 years old to make a positive impact through exceptional entrepreneurship, leadership, creative vision, et cetera. The Downtown Association recognized her in 2019 as Downtown of the Year. And I could go on and on, but rather than going on and on, I'm going to introduce you to Kia Lisa. Welcome. Can I try to use this? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, come on through. You can, okay. uh, in order, in fact, you should be here if you can be. Uh huh. Uh, and, and is this uh, going to work? Or, if you'd hold okay. on to that, All right. we'll just clip. And then if you have anywhere in the world that go or just sit okay. it down over here. Okay. Whatever. Let me see, if, make sure I can do this. We only do the audio because we're all deaf. Um, <laughs> oh, it does work. Okay, that's good. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I wish that I would have prepared some jokes. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, <laughs> I uh, it's kind of hard to follow all those really good jokes. Um, got a little nervous here. But um, anyway, thank you so much for having me. Um, as he said, I'm from the ZAC. Uh, it's called the Zootown Arts Community Center, but we call it the ZAC. And we're downtown now in the old Studebaker building, which is on Main Street. Um, and we did, uh, we we are about a 14 year old organization. I've been with the organization for 10 years and we started out on the north side of Missoula on the railroad tracks in just a, one of those uh, old buildings kind of next to the north side kettle house, one of those older, uh, older brick buildings. And we were there for about 10 years uh, building our programs and then decided to, we launched a $3.5 million capital campaign a few years ago, I raised the money, bought this Studebaker building and remodeled it um, for our needs and uh, moved downtown and right in October 2019. And then we had a global pandemic. <laughs> and uh, we had to uh, rethink everything in this last year, but we were able to keep going actually. And we were able to, um, because largely in part because of our new building, because we have so much space um, we were able to continue to run our programs in modified ways over the last year, and now we're excited to be back open at full capacity again. And so I just invite you all to come there, and I'm going to give you just kind of a little tour through our slideshow and tell you about one at a time uh, the different things that we have to offer and what we're doing. We'd love to just have any of you stop by any time. Um, so let me see if I can do this. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the first room in our building. Um, we have a paint your own pottery studio. You can see the pottery back on the wall, and then a little artist shop where we sell um, work from local artists. Um, and it's also just a walk-in facility. We have a free community art supply closet, so anyone can come in at any time and take art supplies um, out and just sit and make art. Um, we believe that art has the power to change lives and that everyone should have access to art at all times. And it shouldn't be something that's just for a privileged few. So, um, and we also, our art supply closet is a donation base. So if you have any, anything that you're not using, we, um, will take it and, um, distribute it to the masses. So, 
Uh, this is just a little bit more. We have our, our Paint Your Own Pottery Studio is open um, seven days a week, and it's just on a walk-in basis. So you can come in um, and do that anytime. And again, we really like to focus on art forms that are accessible, that you don't have to feel like you have to be uh, necessarily a trained artist. You can just come in and make something um, within a few hours and... Oop. Don't want to end it. See? Oh. I think it's me. It's okay. <laughs> um, just another view of our front window space. Um, and yeah, we love our building. It used to be, uh, as some of you might know, uh, yeah, the Studebaker building used to ha house cars. Um, and when we bought it and it, it was an office building and we just remodeled it all and put in all of these wood floors and, and built it to be our classroom. We have multiple galleries. We actually have three galleries. <laughs> and so every month we have different um, art openings. And we this is just an, a local artist who is giving a talk um, to another group in town. So we invite you to just come in anytime and visit our galleries. We really focus, we try to focus on local artists and um, community shows. So this is actually uh, one of our most famous art shows that we do every year called the Missoula Monster Project. Um, and so 200 kinder kindergartners draw a monster and then we pair them with 200 adult artists that do their own rendition of the monster. And then we, uh, and so it's a really incredible show. It's 400 pieces of art and I'm hoping Larry Pierney will now uh, sign up to do a monster next year. <laughs> now that I have his attention. <laughs> um, but it's really wonderful. So you sign up and then uh, you get assigned a monster that kindergartner drew. And then all when the show opens, all the kindergartners get to come and see you know, the power of art and like the, the monster that they created at school and now, you know, an adult artist has done a rendition of it. And that's my dad there looking at the monsters. <laughs> um, we also do, um, we really try to make our space just open and accessible to all. We have a lot of indigenous artists. Um, we've done, we currently right now, the show in our gallery is with the Artists of Opportunity Resources. Um, we've had members of Soft Landing. Um, uh, we've invited them to do shows and provided them with the art supplies to create their own art so, and so we can show you know, the refugees of Missoula. So we just really try to keep our um, center really diverse and open to everyone and teach everyone that they can share their artwork. This is our soft landing show. This is a, we have um, our main gallery and then a gallery that's just for youth. And then also a gallery that is called the Blackfoot Communications Gallery. Blackfoot Communications gave us a large donation to be able to have that. Um, let's see keeps thinking. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's just wanting, it just keeps thinking that I want it to do something else. <laughs> it keeps asking me if I want to end the slideshow. I don't want to end the slideshow. This is our, <laughs> this is our youth gallery. Um, and so again, uh, we just want to have a space where everyone can feel welcome and proud of their art and be shown. We love to have kids showing alongside more famous artists of Missoula, um, be able to um, just have that feeling of pride that art can give them. This is our um, interactive youth play area designed by a local artist. When we designed our building, uh, we invited a lot of local artists to um, design different spaces and hired them. So this is a little uh, area that is free and open to all kids. And we're really excited that it can be open again. Of course, with the pandemic, we had to shut everything down for a while, but um, it's just a really fun space. And Adults can play in there too. So if anybody wants to come by and go down that slide, I will not stop you. <laughs> not just for kids. Um, we have a music school down in our basement. So we teach um, music to kids and adults. Uh, we have a special program that's ca called Rock Camp. So uh, kids come in and they don't have to have any musical experience whatsoever. And within a week, 
uh, they form a band and write a song and then they perform um, usually on the stage of the Top Hat. Sometimes they've performed at the Wilma. Um, and it's all about just them being able, it's kind of like the reverse of, um, of typical music instruction where one of the things we learned is that oftentimes if a child will get excited about being playing music, but then the next step is sign them up for piano lessons and then they, you have to practice every week and it takes a really long time to actually play with other people and do what you thought you were gonna do. This, they get to learn right away how to collaborate and how to play and their songs aren't amazing, but they do get to write a song. And what we found is that uh, at the end of the day, it provides that motivation to keep practicing and really wanna stick with it. So we have kids now that started out in these rock camps that are, um, you know, professional performers around town. So it's been a really fun and exciting program. And then we were able to build this space that was just um, just for these camps. And we have a recording studio in our building as well. Um, we have, oops. Sorry. This is our, um, we have a theater space. So this is uh, an example of when it is full, um, but this space is, we have a, we do plays, we do community events, we do uh, music. We have actually a bar um, uh, where we serve beer and wine. We just reopened this. This was one of the spaces that was most affected by the pandemic, but we've just been able to reopen it. And so it's actually available for all kinds of things. This is a picture of a conference um, that was, happened there. We, the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival has offices in our, um, in our building. So they rent uh, office space there and now they use this theater as one of their main um, places where they show films. Um, they're just about to start a, a monthly um, documentary film series in our space. Um, it's, we rent it out to uh, like Submittable. This is Submittable's Christmas party. Um, so it's about a 300 capacity standing, 175 capacity space. So if you guys ever wanted to come and have a party there or um, we've just reopened, we just had a really wonderful jazz night uh, uh, and we have concerts. And right now um, there's a play much ado about nothing is happening in that space. So just, it's one of the things that we, um, when we were building the ZAC it, that we learned from the community was just to have another, uh, another theater space for all kinds of different things. Uh, and that's of course all ages and really fun. So. We also, um, yeah, here's another example of a concert. We've been told by um, the community that we have the sexiest wheelchair ramp in town <laughs> for our stage. <laughs> uh, that was one of the other great things about moving downtown was to have a building that's fully accessible. So now we have ramps, we have elevator, we have um, really, we can provide access to anyone, anyone who needs it. Um, we're really known for our youth education. Um, so these are some kids in our classroom. We do, we're in the middle of summer camps right now. We do um, 10 weeks of summer camps, about four summer camps a week. Uh, everything from plays to uh, performance, music, visual arts, really everything. And we're always looking for um, volunteers also to come and help us with our camps. Um, we did, in the pandemic, we started uh, something that we called the Art Academy, which was five days a week during the school day for kids that were displaced from their regular school schedules. Um, we have lots and lots of kids coming in all the time. In fact, this week, we have a really fun, if anybody wants to come, <laughs> we have a really fun camp this week that's called Yes Fest, where the kids come in and they write plays. Um, and they design sets. And then at the end of the week, adults have to perform the plays and we invite um, different uh, adults. Like 
this year the mayor couldn't come, but in years previous, the mayor has been one of the adults and, uh, you know, different people around town that are well known. Maybe I can get some of you guys to sign up for it next year. <laughs> so you have to, um, you have to act out the plays that the kids, that the kids wrote. And that is happening this Friday at the new Missoula Public Library at 7 p.m. If anybody wants to come, it'll be at 7 p.m. at the new library uh, upstairs in their, in their big room. I don't know if you guys have been there yet, but it's incredible. The public the new library. So anyway, we have a lot of different performance-based camps. We have visual arts camps, um, and a lot, we do try to do a lot of really fun things to get the kids interacting with the community, like this play that we have coming up. We also do adult education. We have a, um, a full um, community print shop. So we have a lot of different printing presses, and we teach um, we teach silkscreen, we teach all kinds of different printmaking classes, um, and people really sometimes forget that we do just as much for adults as we do for kids. A lot of our kids stuff is just gets out in the newspaper and we get well known for it, but um, we all, uh, we have a long list of classes every single month for adults, and obviously we have a lot of community spaces too. We have um, several artist studios. This is our shared studio space. So we have both um, private studios and a shared studio space that we rent out to artists at low cost. Um, most of the artists who have a space at the Zach have been there for years. Um, so we always have a long waiting list for our studio spaces, but that's another part of what we do is to be able to provide a space where um, people can afford to come and create art and become better artists. Uh, this is our conference room. So we also have um, a lot of different spaces that are available to the public to rent. Um, this is a, one of our one of those spaces. So we use this as, a, as our own conference room for our meetings and a classroom, but this is also available for the community to rent, it's another beautiful space. Uh, this is our donor wall, um, in which we hired a local artist to create for us, who's a ceramicist. These are all ceramic plates. Um, we have a lot of different fun uh, local artist examples in the space. This is a mural and Courtney Blazon, who is a local artist who made this mural. It's really fun. Um, and this is also, she's standing in front of the door that is our free community art supply closet. Um, it's the first security bank, totally free art supply closet. They gave us a donation for that. And, you know, as you know, they do totally free checking. So they thought it would be fun to do the totally free art supply closet. <laughs> Even in the back of the Zach, we're taking over downtown. So this is our, our alley now that we've actually hired. Um, we we did a call to artists to do to create four murals in our alley, and the murals were um, they were tasked to interview different people in our community and create murals uh, around the subject of feeling welcome. Um, and it was uh, four indigenous artists that we hired, and they um, they had different conversations with different people in our community that might not always feel welcome in our downtown. And then they created murals based on those conversations. So we're bringing a lot of art to downtown now. And I am lucky enough to now be serving on the uh, downtown master plan committee too. So it, we're gonna be, you're gonna be seeing a lot more art. <laughs> um, this is another one of our murals and Stella Nall. Each, uh, it looks like just a fun, a funny monster, but each one of those hands is actually a, a replica of a different person in our community's hand that she interviewed and talked to. Um, so it's pretty special. This is another mural that we have inside of the Zach. Um, this is a local artist, Lillian Nelson, as she's painting it. And again, I can't but the space is just a really wonderful space. And, and I'd love for, for any and all of you to come and visit us. Um, we just uh, exist to uh, 
provide accessible, life-changing art experiences for everyone in Missoula. And we try to do that in as many ways as possible. Um, and so opportunities um, for kids and adults, and if any of you have grandchildren, um, please uh, get them hooked up with us. Um, and thanks for having me. Yes. What is the acronym Z O C C? Yeah, so it's it's the Zootown Arts Community Center, the ZAC. And so yeah, it stands that ZAC. So we just call it the ZAC, and Zootown is just a funny name for Missoula. And actually, I didn't name it, but I, I think in the beginning there was already the MAC, which is the <laughs> Montana Arts and Cultural Center, and the MAM. So they just wanted to have a different a, a different letter so that we could distinguish ourselves from the rest of the arts centers in town. Yeah. You mentioned that you're the fifth generation uh, Montanian here. Yeah, I am. Uh huh. Where did your family originally get here from? Oh, um, <laughs> well, uh, my, my grandparents, uh, my great grandparents were Max and Gretchen Schlau. And they came over from, they were from Germany. I have actually have a, and a lot of my family grew up in Missoula, but then also there were some family in uh, Glasgow, Montana and all around. And we have a, we have a little, a homesteader cabin actually that my great grandfather built that's uh, in the Swan Valley. Yeah, but yeah, we're all from Missoula where I've lived here my whole life. <laughs> my parents uh, were, so they were some of the original founders of Sussex School. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about the funding uh, on that end of it. Goes. Yeah, so, um, so we, like I said, uh, the, the process of building the new Zach was, um, it was quite a, quite a big feat. Um, trying to raise $3.5 million for an art center was not easy. Uh, but uh, I literally went and, you know, knocked on doors for, uh, it took about five years really for the whole thing to, and even the design process. And uh, I mean, because we are a nonprofit too, I, I ended up being the everything. So the project director <laughs> for all the builders and everything, you know what I mean? Like cutting corners. So it's, it was challenging. We, but uh, we, we survive in, uh, we have three different basically ways that we take in revenue. One is donations, the, another is grants, and then another is, you know, fee for service revenue. So now that we're downtown, we actually really do have, I mean, we have a wine and beer license, we have a bar, we have, you know, a shop, we sell, we sell artwork, you know, we take a commission like other galleries. It's less of a commission than a regular gallery because we, we are, we do exist to support artists. So, but we, it, it helps to have all these little ways. So we do, we get money for, um, we provide a ton of scholarships uh, for kids to come for free to our camps, but otherwise we do charge for that. So we have a, a lot of different ways that we take in, uh, take in money, but we, um, it's definitely been a growing, a growing process and donations uh, are, from the community are a, are a big way that we're able to continue to operate and provide free activities for the community. Any questions? Good job. Go. <laughs> Thanks so, for having me. <laughs>